Good morning everyone. We are leaving this touristy little town and you can see there's already a lot of activity. It's actually about 8.30. As we kind of move north and the season moves on, we're losing some of the length of our days. Doesn't get quite as light quite as early. But in the last episode, Snow told you some friends of ours gave us a secret tip. And so we are heading out of this touristy area to go on a magical experience. But you guys are gonna be blown away. This is something that's on her bucket list. And we actually might have to wait for the weather, but this has been something on her bucket list for a long time. So we're gonna make it work. We are on Ruta 7, which is the Carretera Austral. Yes. And I can tell you, these roads are doing everything they can to beat us into submission. They are just pounding, bouncing roads, just ripping our van and our spirits apart, <laughs> to be honest with you. There is no good way to take these roads, and by now we've been on them so long, we're just ready to get off them. But we only have about an hour and a half drive on them today, according to the Google, but as slow as we have to go on these roads, probably gonna stretch it out. But I promise, guys, <laughs> we're winding them down soon the more kilometers we put in driving north we do know that soon this road turns to pavement and we'll be even if it's potholed i don't care it'll be so much better than this section of this road so we are on the countdown of these bumpy roads but we do have several more days of them and we have been on a lot of bad roads on this journey but none have mounted up to the Patagonia and what we're experiencing today and yesterday. It is rainy and a gloomy day so far, but we sure are passing beautiful stuff all along this road. All right, a little second of peace before we go back onto the bumps. All right, we just made the turn onto the road to Puerto Sanchez, which is the little remote village we're gonna be staying in. We're passing over sort of like a gray glacier river. Been over a few of these. It's kind of interesting how some are really bright blue, blue turquoise and some are gray. But for the time being, we are on a concrete road. Very I don't exciting. think it's gonna last no. more than another minute or so. But that's nice. But it's like soothing to the soul. Look how long it is. Oh, I think I see the end up there. Just enjoy this. Yeah. We have a lamb jam. <laughs> We've got a sheep. Look, there's goats over here on the hill. Oh, there are some cool goats. Oh, man. Oh, you're the little black and white guy. Ah, there's some goats climbing up the hill. We love goats. Man is a little baby herders. goat. The sheep herders are oh. shooting them over across. And then you can see the sheep dogs. There's three sheep dogs and then another. Or no. Dog. Yeah, maybe two sheep dogs and a couple muds, but definitely a couple sheep dogs. Oh my, I think this road is fixing to get interesting. I think. The slope is so steep to the lake up here. I think we've got to take this switchbacky road up here up and over the little mountainside. Oh yeah, here it is on the map. Yep. There it is. <laughs> okay. But so far it's concrete. Let's hope it lasts. I'm gonna see up over there on the mountain guys. We got some climbing to do. The road is closed here at this park area. And we're gonna come up here and come around. I don't see a weight limit sign, but we're gonna try to detour around here. It looks like a little wooden rickety bridge. Oh, 
the church. So we were a little nervous about going over this bridge and these little houses around here are cool. But a nice guy from Chile pulled up in the pickup truck and said, are you going to Sanchez? Yes, we are. And he said, go this way, cross the bridge, you're good. Dolly. <laughs> Dolly, let's go. And he's out in front of us. So, there we go. <laughs> the concrete is gone. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, there's the switch back roads right in front of us. We are on the climb, 22 kilometers to Puerto Sanchez. Looking at a sky so clear. So much to discover here. Setting out on my own, all the places I can go. It's a long, 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 long and winding road. We just finished the climb and came around the corner and look at this. We told you it was too steep. We told you it was too steep to drive around the lake. We had no idea, but look at this beautiful little nook back in here. And you can see the sheer walls. It looks like they just cut the rock to make the road along here. Because it's as straight down as it is straight up through this little piece. You'll see it as we kind of come around here and wrap up in this little corner. And we've been on these roads before. We're no stranger to these. And they are always beautiful. There's definitely been some little rock slides here, and you can see where they push the rocks down to make the roads up here. We'll show you in just a second. As we come around here, we wrap around here. <laughs> oh yeah, there's definitely been some erosion up here. <laughs> and you can see the sheer wall, so we just kind of drove around there. And it's, yeah, straight down. Keeping it real in Chile! Those squiggly lines are not some sort of mythical <laughs> maze. That's the road we're following. So we've got another climb. You guys saw the rewards of the last climb. The question is, are they going to be the same? Is the quality of this road going to hold? Ooh, here we go. Time goes on and seasons change. It's these moments that remain. And no matter where I go, I'll always hold him close. It's a long, long, It's a long, 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 long and winding road. kind of climb back up away from the lake a little bit and we have like a little flat meadow or almost looks a little bit marshy up here but happy to be back in the trees these are some sort of big I don't know cypress cedar uh, pine 
spruce, some kind of trees. Some kind of tree, guys. <laughs> some kind of big green trees. We like trees. And just like that, we make it to the little town, Puerto Sanchez. Now, Tranquilo is over across the lake. This was about a two hour drive over here. And you might say, why didn't you just pick up the boat over there? Well, Snow has investigated this and I believe we get a better deal all around over here. We'll explain later. But if you look over out there on that island along, you can see where the water has sort of chiseled its way under the stone. And I believe those are indeed the marble caves. All right, I always say it's better to be lucky than good. We just pulled up to this place and uh, they said right now is the best time. The sun just popped out. Tomorrow is supposed to be a miserable weather day. It is windy, but the colors to see in the caves, you want the sun out. <laughs> it literally just popped out. They said we need to go now. The wind is gonna get worse throughout the day. We have got to go. All right, y'all may not have a scale of time, but from the time we pulled into the town until the time we're on the boat is like about a total of 10 minutes. Yeah, we got hustle. <laughs> but I don't think we told you why. The rest of the week uh, is uh, bad weather. It's gonna be raining. So we were kind of thinking we were gonna have to camp in this little town for five or six days to wait for the weather to clear. But instead, we got here just in time to jump on the very last tour while the sun is shining. Let's go. The Marble Caves in Chile, a beautiful natural wonder. These caves are fascinating for tourists and to researchers due to their amazing formations and the surrounding scenery. But while many people appreciate the beauty of the caves, most do not know a lot about them. These amazing works of nature are in a lake shared by Chile and Argentina. The marble caves are on a peninsula of marble on the Chile side of the lake. In Chile, the lake is called General Carrera Lake. The waterways around the caves are narrow and can only be explored by small boats or kayaks with a tour operator. The best time to visit the marble caves is in November to February because the melting snow and the glacier ice water make the lake water a pristine turquoise color. One of the most amazing things about the marble caves is their ability to change colors depending on the seasons. These color changes also depend on how high or low the water is, because the marble colors reflect from the water. Since the glaciers do not melt until the summer months, the water is not as high, and it makes the colors a lot less vibrant. Visitors that go in the winter or spring will notice softer or navy blue hues. Compared to when the glaciers are melting, the colors range from cobalt blue to white and even pink. While the caves are called the marble caves, they were actually made up of 90 to 95% calcium carbonate. These minerals got eroded by waves over the past 6,000 years. The notoriously strong winds of Patagonia have also worked to form the caves over time. With the waves and the wind working together, the result is the amazing swirls, holes, and crevices that have been formed. These giant pieces of nature are also estimated to weigh about 5.5 billion tons. Now sadly, eventually, the same forces that created these caves will end up destroying them because every day that the wind blows and the waves crash, the caves continue to erode. Look at these giant marble walls here. And right up here you can see these line of people. There's actually a cave that we go in and go through. So this should be pretty cool.
Joe Snow, she has a terrible fear of sharks, and she thinks she sees some everywhere. Shark so fins. she <laughs> sees some shark fins. There's two of them. <laughs> All right, so this they call the cathedral, and it is stunning. Look at how white it is under the water and how clear the water is, even though it's so bright blue. This is really beautiful. I love the colors here. Look at that. <laughs> the first part of our boat tour was on the Tranquilo sector side. This part is accessed by all of the tour companies we saw this morning in Tranquilo. The second part of our tour is on the Sanchez side which is privately owned and can only be accessed by a limited amount of tour boats. Going back and forth between the two sides means crossing through the open water of the General Carrera Lake, which means big waves, even when the wind is not bad. This means we get a little adventure with our tour today. So our guide let us know that the Rio Tranquillo side of things, the more touristy side, is one sector. Now I kind of interpreted that a sector is a county. So that's one sector and this area of Puerto Sanchez is a different sector. Now on the Tranquillo side, they tend to stay within the government reserve area, which is why there's so many boats, so many tours, so many crowds. Over on this side, a lot of the caves uh, are privately, or well, not a lot of them, all of them are privately owned by one family. Um, and it's been in that family for a couple of generations. And some of them actually still live on this island. But they kind of resulted from Puerto Sanchez used to be a mining town. In the 1950s, there was a big copper mining boom in this area. And almost 2,000 people lived in this little town back then because of the mining operation. Now, around 1980, uh, she said the mining ended. We don't know because of language and interpretation issues if they just stopped the mining for environmental reasons or if the mine ran dry and there was no more copper. But this area we're in now is mostly privately owned and resulted from the copper boom. And what used to be a town of about 2,000 people is now a town of about 160 people and they're trying to grow the tourism business. So that is a little bit of history from this place. This boat you're seeing is something they used to use to bring the copper from the mine over to other ports that had roads because the road that we brought you in, that beautiful road with all the switchbacks that brings you to Puerto Sanchez was not built until 2002. So the only way here was by boat. So there's also a sunken boat in the little bay of this island, and that is from the people that own this island. It used to be their transport back and forth to the mainland. So there's some pretty cool stories, some definitely cool history. We love the family vibe of the tour agency that set this up. They've been very responsive through WhatsApp. They're very kind, and it's just an amazing, amazing place with some really cool history. So what's wild is how on the top of all these caves, how it just makes like sharp, almost like as Snow said earlier, sharp fins or flower petals and they all just kind of hang down here. And then you can see the different colors that the minerals turn the, uh, the marble. And then additionally, I think the water stains it and there's maybe some kind of stuff growing on it as well. 
and then you have all the dimples in the marble as well. It's just, it's just really, really, really beautiful. Going into the caves on the boat was absolutely amazing. We did go into a couple on the Tranquilo side, which were beautiful, but they were crowded with other boats and the time inside the caves was limited to just a couple of minutes. But on the Sanchez side, we were able to stay inside the caves longer and really enjoy the natural beauty without feeling rushed. We are about to do a really cool part, a part you cannot do from the Tranquillo side. We're gonna get off and we're gonna walk through some of these caves on the island. Let's go. All right, my favorite part, we're going spelunking. You guys know I love spelunking. We have hard hats and lights because we're going in the cave. I'd wait forever, honey, for one more minute with you. I'd spend all my money to spend more time with you. It may sound a little bit funny, there's no one else like you say that you do. I was on the long road running, found my way to you. From driving rain to sunny, we made it through. You might say we were a little bit funny, but then I did I shoot, say that you do. Ooh, 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 I do. have been the coolest cave walking we've done. That was cool, wasn't it, Kurt? I like Splunky! <laughs> so maybe 15 years ago, I saw a picture of this place on Facebook and I was immediately like, I have to figure out how to go there. But then I Googled it and I discovered it's pretty remote and pretty difficult to get to and it got filed away in the back of my brain somewhere. But as soon as we decided to do this van life journey and come to South America, I couldn't remember the name of the place, but I had to search and find it. And as soon as I saw the picture again, I'm like, this is somewhere me and Kurt are going to go. Now it is remote and it is a bumpy ride to get here. You heard us complain about that in the last video, but all those complaints are gone. This is so worth the drive and the trouble that it takes to get here. It is prettier and more amazing in person than it is in any picture you're gonna see on Instagram. And over there where we spent the night last the other night in Rio Tranquillo, the tourist side of things, yes, you can go there and you can come out and do a, an hour or two hour ride over there with all the other boats. 
or you can drive only one more hour and a half down that beautiful road we brought you down this morning and come here to Puerto Sanchez and take the four and a half hour tour, which is the only way you're gonna walk inside this cave and see this beautiful island up close like we've been able to see it. If you do the work to get to Tranquillo, it, you need to do another hour and a half to get to Sanchez. So everything was so rushed because everything happened so last minute. And thankfully we snagged the good weather because you can see the rain coming in over the mountains. Uh, we didn't show you how to pay or where to camp or anything like that. There's really only one place in town. It is right by the playground. They have a little, I think maybe a hamburger stand. And this is it. We've got camping, barbecue grills, bathrooms, showers. Uh, a little bit of parking for cars or vans. But this is the shop you come to to book this tour. And you can also reach them on their Facebook page or WhatsApp and I'll put a link to the Facebook page in the description. Okay, it is five o'clock and it has been a busy day that we didn't even plan to be busy. We have arrived in the small little town that we went through on the way to our tour today. And we have decided we're gonna park right here by their city park, call it a night. We're gonna call this home for the night, right, Curtie? Yeah, this is it. Gee, buddy, we're home, okay? And you've made a mess in the house, so we need to clean up. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys!